10 Early Symptoms of Dementia Dementia is a collection of symptoms that can occur due to a variety of possible diseases. Dementia symptoms include impairments in thought, communication, and memory. Symptoms of Dementia If you or your loved one is experiencing memory problems, don't immediately conclude that it's dementia. A person needs to have at least two types of impairment that significantly interfere with everyday life to receive a dementia diagnosis. In addition to difficulty remembering, the person may also experience impairments in language, communication, focus, reasoning. 1. Subtle short-term memory changes. Trouble with memory can be an early symptom of dementia. The changes are often subtle and tend to involve short-term memory. An older person may be able to remember events that took place years ago but not what they had for breakfast. Other symptoms of changes in short-term memory include forgetting where they left an item, struggling to remember why they entered a particular room, or forgetting what they were supposed to do on any given day. 2. Difficulty finding the right words. Another early symptom of dementia is struggling to communicate thoughts. A person with dementia may have difficulty explaining something or finding the right words to express themselves. Having a conversation with a person who has dementia can be difficult and it may take longer than usual to conclude. 3. Changes in mood. A change in mood is also common with dementia. If you have dementia, it isn't always easy to recognize this in yourself, but you may notice this change in someone else. Depression, for instance, is typical of early dementia. Along with mood changes, you might also see a shift in personality. One typical type of personality change seen with dementia is a shift from being shy to outgoing. This is because the condition often affects judgment. 4. Apathy. Apathy, or listlessness, commonly occurs in early dementia. A person with symptoms could lose interest in hobbies or activities. They may not want to go out anymore or do anything fun. They may lose interest in spending time with friends and family, and they may seem emotionally flat. 5. Difficulty completing normal tasks. A subtle shift in the ability to complete normal tasks may indicate that someone has early dementia. This usually starts with difficulty doing more complex tasks like balancing a checkbook or playing games that have a lot of rules. Along with the struggle to complete familiar tasks, they may struggle to learn how to do new things or follow new routines. 6. Confusion Someone in the early stages of dementia may often become confused when memory, thinking, or judgment lapses. Confusion may arise as they can no longer remember faces, find the right words, or interact with people normally. Confusion can occur for a number of reasons and apply to different situations. For example, they may misplace their car keys, forget what comes next in the day, or have difficulty remembering someone they've met before. 7. Difficulty following storylines. Difficulty following storylines may occur due to early dementia. This is a classic early symptom. Just as finding and using the right words becomes difficult, people with dementia sometimes forget the meanings of words they hear or struggle to follow along with conversations or TV programs. 8. A failing sense of direction. The sense of direction and spatial orientation commonly starts to deteriorate with the onset of dementia. This can mean not recognizing one's familiar landmarks and forgetting regularly used directions. It also becomes more difficult to follow a series of directions and step-by-step -step instructions. 9. Being repetitive. Repetition is common in dementia because of memory loss and general behavioral changes. A person may repeat daily tasks, such as shaving, or they may collect items obsessively. They also may repeat the same questions in a conversation after they've been answered. 10. Struggling to adapt to change. For someone in the early stages of dementia, the experience can cause fear. Suddenly, they can't remember people they know or follow what others are saying. They can't remember why they went to the store, and they get lost on the way home. Because of this, they might crave routine and be afraid to try new experiences. Difficulty adapting to change is also a typical symptom of early dementia. Can you prevent dementia? You can take steps to improve cognitive health and reduce your or your loved one's risk. This includes keeping the mind active with word puzzles, memory games, and reading. Being physically active, getting at least 150 minutes of exercise per week, and making other healthy lifestyle changes can also lower your risk. Examples of lifestyle changes include stopping smoking if you smoke and eating a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids, fruits, 
vegetables, whole grains. You can also reduce your risk by increasing your intake of vitamin D according to the Mayo Clinic. Some researchers suggest that people with low levels of vitamin D in their blood are more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Coconut oil, 4 tablespoons of this brain food may prevent Alzheimer's. Brain starvation is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. One of the primary fuels your brain needs is glucose, which is converted into energy. The mechanism for glucose uptake in your brain has only recently begun to be studied, and what has been learned is that your brain actually manufactures its own insulin to convert glucose in your bloodstream into the food it needs to survive. As you may already know, diabetes is the condition where your body's response to insulin is weakened until your body eventually stops producing the insulin necessary to regulate blood sugar, and your body's ability to regulate, or process, blood sugar into energy becomes essentially broken. Now. When your brain's production of insulin decreases, your brain literally begins to starve, as it's deprived of the glucose converted energy it needs to function normally. This is what happens to Alzheimer's patients, portions of their brain start to atrophy, or starve, leading to impaired functioning and eventual loss of memory, speech, movement, and personality. In effect, your brain can begin to atrophy from starvation if it becomes insulin resistant and loses its ability to convert glucose into energy. It is now also known that diabetics have a 65% increased risk of also being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and there appears to be a potent link between the two diseases, even though the exact mechanisms have yet to be determined. It seems quite clear however that both are related to insulin resistance, in your body, and in your brain. Alternate brain food, can stop brain atrophy in its tracks. Fortunately, your brain is able to run on more than one type of energy supply, and this is where coconut oil enters the picture. There's another substance that can feed your brain and prevent brain atrophy. It may even restore and renew neuron and nerve function in your brain after damage has set in. The substance in question is called ketone bodies or keto acids. Ketones are what your body produces when it converts fat, as opposed to glucose, into energy and a primary source of ketone bodies are the medium chain triglycerides MCT, found in coconut oil. Coconut oil contains about 66% MCTs. The benefits of ketone bodies may also extend to a number of other health conditions. According to Dr. Newport, Dr. Mary Newport writes about ketone bodies, an alternative fuel for your brain which your body makes when digesting coconut oil, and how coconut oil may offer profound benefits in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Further, this is a potential treatment for Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, multiple sclerosis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, drug-resistant epilepsy, brittle type I diabetes, and diabetes type 2, where there is insulin resistance. Ketone bodies may help the brain recover after a loss of oxygen in newborns through adults, may help the heart recover after an acute attack, and may shrink cancerous tumors. Medium chain triglycerides MCT, are fats that are not processed by your body in the same manner as long chain triglycerides. Normally, a fat taken into your body must be mixed with bile released from your gallbladder before it can be broken down in your digestive system. But medium chain triglycerides go directly to your liver, which naturally converts the oil into ketones, bypassing the bile entirely. Your liver then immediately releases the ketones into your bloodstream where they are transported to your brain to be used as fuel. In fact, ketones appear to be the preferred source of brain food in patients affected by diabetes or Alzheimer's. In Alzheimer's disease, the neurons in certain areas of the brain are unable to take in glucose due to insulin resistance and slowly die off, a process that appears to happen one or more decades before the symptoms become apparent, Dr. Newport states in her article. If these cells had access to ketone bodies, they could potentially stay alive, and continue to function. The ketonic diet, why avoiding grains also protects against neurodegeneration. Another way to increase ketone production in your body, is by restricting carbohydrates. This is what happens when you go on a high fat, high protein, low carbohydrate diet, your body begins to run on fats instead of carbohydrates, and the name for this is ketosis. This is also why you don't starve to death when you restrict food for weeks at a time because your body is able to convert stored fat into ketones that are used as fuel instead of glucose. Consuming medium-chain triglycerides, 
such as coconut oil, is a better option. However, because the ketones produced by ketosis are not concentrated in your bloodstream, but are instead mostly excreted in your urine. MCTs and Alzheimer's Research The mechanism of this MCT ketone metabolism appears to be that your body treats MCTs as a carbohydrate and not a fat. This allows the ketone energy to hit your bloodstream without the normal insulin spike associated with carbohydrates entering your bloodstream. So in effect coconut oil is a fat that acts like a carbohydrate when it comes to brain fuel. Therapeutic levels of MCTs have been studied at 20 grams per day. According to Dr. Newport's calculations, 5 just over 2 tablespoons of coconut oil, about 35 milliliters or 7 level teaspoons, would supply you with the equivalent of 20 grams of MCT, which is indicated as either a preventative measure against degenerative neurological diseases, or as a treatment for an already established case. Remember though that people tolerate coconut oil differently, and you may have to start slowly, and build up to these therapeutic levels. My recommendation is to start with one teaspoon, taken with food in the mornings. Gradually add more coconut oil every few days until you are able to tolerate 4 tablespoons. Coconut oil is best taken with food, to avoid upsetting your stomach. You also need dietary B12 for optimal brain health. According to a small Finnish study recently published in the journal Neurology, six people who consume foods rich in B12, may also reduce their risk of Alzheimer's in their later years. For each unit increase in the marker of vitamin B12, holotranscobalamin, the risk of developing Alzheimer's was reduced by 